Hello everyone, welcome to my tutorial on how to make a large city with many skyscrapers. So as many as some of you might already know, um, this tutorial is like the third remake that I made because the first few the first two times of this tutorial was successful in the sense that it had many views, but um I was speaking way too fast and it really um was very bad because um people couldn't catch what I was doing so I really apologize for that and um, in retrospect I shouldn't have rushed my tutorial and um it it didn't occur to me that you know I was speaking very fast so you know I just left the tutorial as it is because I didn't really have much time to um, invest to remake this video so right now um, I hope I can redeem myself and po probably um, make a better video even though my um, pronunciation in English isn't that good so I hope that you all still can catch some points from me and understand what I'm trying to do right now so as you can see right now I'm trying to build the road infrastructure of my city so I started out my city with easy mode so that I'm able to have more money to build this transport infrastructure and then the next thing is that I raised my taxes of my commercial officers to the highest 20% so that I will stop the commercial officers from growing at first so I'll explain that um, in due time so right now I'm just trying to link up my highways to neighboring connections to my uh, neighboring city so that um, sims can commute easily from one city to another without um, any traffic jams and so so connections are very important to stimulate the demand of the um, economy in this city but the even more important thing is that um, before you actually start this city you need a regional population of at least 300,000 why? because um, in order to in order for your city to have a large population to have a huge um, skyscraper city you already need to have some um, regional demand spill over from your other cities so as you can see here the RCI demand is already very high because um, I have already constructed some cities with well-educated sims that um, are able to you know find um, high wealth jobs and are also high wealth so they naturally create a demand for more high wealth houses, offices and also industries. So this will help to kickstart my city kickstart my city in building skyscrapers more quickly than you know just starting a new organic city without any regional demand. So as you can see here I'm developing my um com not commercial my transport infrastructure very extensively to prepare for the huge influx in population in due time so actually um, what is recommended is that you shouldn't be building all these highways at the start so um, uh, I want you to take note that you know this is just a demonstration of how the transport infrastructure might look like so you can actually build these intersections between the railway tracks to facilitate um, the movement of train so that they can move left and right as well instead of um, just forward and backward so if you don't really understand what I'm talking about um, I'm sorry because this is a crash course for um, building a big city so um, 50 minutes is never enough to actually cover everything on how to build a big city so um, I hope that I can make more tutorials next time round but right now I'm just um, trying to show you um, the gist of how to um, make a huge and successful city so all this will be my industrial hub as you can see here and you need to make sure they have good transport infrastructure as you can see with the roads and highways and also the railway tracks so if you haven't realized my highway is actually in a shape of a hex sign so it's like the shift um, number three on the keyboard the hex sign it's like the tic-tac-toe where you have um, nine boxes so on each of the boxes at a corner I will build industrial zones and on the center of the tic-tac-toe I will build commercial zones and finally on the last four um, edges of the tic-tac-toe I will build um, residential zones as you can see here I've already filled up three of the nine boxes of the tic-tac-toe so 
um, you might not have enough money to build all these highways at the start. So I would recommend you that um, you do not build these highways first, but you actually um, build the normal city, but plan up enough space so that you can actually fill up your city with these highways later on. So I hope that um, this commentary is more clear to you. And if you have any questions, do feel free to ask me on my channel because um, I realized that um, I might have left out something and there's probably a lot of things that I didn't cover. So even before my city started, the demand for um, residential, commercial, industrial zones is already very high because of the effect of my neighboring cities. So before you start on this main city, you need to build some peripheral cities that already have a lot of well-educated sims. Educated sims in the sense that um, the value of education in the city is more than 120 and there's um, a lot of um, high-tech industries in the opposite cities and also um, probably a few commercial offices. So um, the main thing is that in these neighboring cities, you do not really want the commercial offices to grow too much because a region shares the demand um, within each other so if there's too much offices growing in one city the other city will be starved of, of some of the regional office demands that it can obtain if you know commercial offices were restricted in the other sideline or the peripheral cities so this is the main city we are talking about and this is a city that I want all my commercial offices to grow so in the um, side cities or the peripheral cities, I want the commercial offices, the growth to be as limited as possible so that um, all the demand of the commercial offices can be um, directed to this city. So this is how um, regional um, demand works in a nutshell. So before I actually um, start up my city, I need to ensure that um, my city has all the things that um, it needs to grow like power, water, land fuels, transport and I need to tweak my tax a little bit so that I will prevent any um, low value dirty industries from growing. So as you can see here, the demand of these zones are already very high so I do not need to worry about you know getting my education level up quickly because um, there's already many sims that are flocking here to stay because there's congestion in the peripheral cities. So right now I'm going to start on my commercial sector soon. So I've restricted the commercial demand of high wealth commercial offices to the highest. I mean um, the taxes are the highest so that the demand are the lowest. So um, as you can see here there's a very big plunge in the demand of high wealth commercial offices. So um, I want to keep the growth of the high-tech industries there because these high-tech industries will also account for the demand for the high wealth commercial offices. So when there's many factories to manufacture goods and services, the high wealth, co high -wealth commercial offices will also flourish and grow. Okay. So um, it's as usual for running a city, you need to ensure that you know the crime and the fire coverage are up to standard and you need to do this without um, causing your city to be broke. So at the start when your city is growing, um, a lot of income will come actually from the industries because high tech industries provide a lot of income for your city. So it's a very good way to kickstart your city to grow it quickly. So I did use a bit of cheats. So if you realize here, some of these buildings are Maxis buildings. This is because um, I've downloaded some um, special industrial buildings from Simtropolis which allows me to actually grow industrial buildings that have um, more jobs per square tile. So some of the buildings can allow for 400 jobs per 9,000. So for normal Maxis buildings, it might be just you know 9,000 giving 70 jobs. So um, this is more um, effective usage of the high-tech industrial zone space. So um, the growth of high-tech industries is always very high, but there might not be enough space to grow these industries. So getting these big offices will help you to 
you know, grow your high tech industries, which in turn spur the growth of um, high wealth um, commercial offices, which you will see later. So um, the main thing that you can't see here is that the, I've already developed um, many cities at the site so that, you know, when I start this city, the demand is very high and it will grow really quickly. So as you can see in nine years, um, so many high tech industries and big houses have already grown in the city. So um, to build a good peripheral city with high education level and um, high tech industries, you can refer to my older tutorial videos, which I'll teach you how to um, build this type of cities. And when you have a lot of um, cities like this, you can actually um, start to build a main city where all the commercial offices are located. So all this transport infrastructure, all these trains and highways will help your city to be the commercial hub of the region because it seems from all over um, Simtropolis, from all over the, the city and the regional areas will actually commute to your city and they will come here and work because um, these highways and trains provide a very efficient way of commuting between cities and also within the city. So sims from your city can come to your commercial hub and work, while sims from your neighboring cities can also do so. Okay, so we don't want to make the commercial hub too big because if it's too big, um, the skyscrapers won't be so big and impactful. So for a start, um, many of the buildings that I downloaded from Simtropolis, um, their job um, count is like 4,000. So if you have too many commercial zones, um, the commercial offices will be, will be spread out and hence um, not a lot of big commercial skyscrapers will grow. So we shall limit the space for commercial office to the center of the tic-tac-toe design and um, make sure that it's not too big. So similarly, you must give it um, water and power to grow and you can actually download some of these um, train stations from um, Simtropolis as well. Okay, so right now we can see that the commercial offices start to grow, but the growth will be the growth will be very slow at the start because there's some problems where you know the residential um, wealth doesn't really grow. So um, for commercial offices. For the skyscrapers to start growing, um, in Maxis you have a cap limit. So um, how it works is that you know when your population reaches a certain limit, new buildings are unlocked. So when your population reaches a certain number, um, your city can now is now eligible to build larger skyscrapers. So we must get our population up to a significant number before we grow the commercial offices. Okay. So um, a country club will also help me to um, develop more residential zones and I need to maintain my city. So I continue to develop this power, water, police and fire station and etc. And as you can see here, some buildings have already sprouted out. So this is the, my birth of the commercial sector. So it will take time to grow. So don't worry about it. So meanwhile, um, while you have more money, do feel free to expand the transport infrastructure so that you know you can finish up your city and um, develop it to the fullest extent. So use the opinion polls to actually determine if you are doing a good job. So you need to ensure that the safety, the health and education are as high as possible. So when these factors are high, the land value will increase and then high wealth commercial offices can grow. So you not only need demand for commercial offices, you need to ensure that they have um, high land value to grow or else you know these offices won't choose to develop on a dirty site or at a place where there is no um, educated sims to work inside. Okay? So I'm just going to extend the highways to um, the neighboring regions and also to continue to zone my railways. So these railways will help me a lot in um, transporting the sims around. So if the railways can't intersect the highway, do feel free to demolish some um, 
of the ramps so that you know the railways can cut through the city properly so railways and um, highways are two good ways to um, develop your city so you can choose other methods if you are good at this you can build monorails as well you can build subways but subways are very expensive so uh, um, building a train station is actually cheaper than a subway so um, building train stations also help to you know increase the beauty of the city so um, the main um, choices of traffic um, transport here is building train stations and also building highways so as you can see here I fill up the next um, box of my tic-tac-toe city system so now I have four boxes filled up so the center is the commercial region and the commercial region is linked to the residential regions and then at the four edges of the tic-tac-toe design I have my industrial regions so I feel that this um, system or design is the best to um, facilitate uh, commute time so the residents can actually get to the commercial offices very quickly and also get to the industrial hubs very, very quickly so some residents might choose to work in offices some might choose to work in industries like engineers and you know um, accountants and so on so you must give them a choice and you must make sure that the residents are connected as close as possible to the industries and commercial hub and hence the design of this um, city system as you can see here so make sure that you continue to provide the basic necessities for your city and manage the garbage also so that's one thing that you might forget when the population skyrockets so this is a very new um, residential hub so when I built water supply to here the residential growth will increase exponentially which will in turn boost the commercial growth so when a new generation of um, ed educated sims come out I'm able to you know grow more commercial offices so that you know uh, I will be able to construct my city center so it will take some time and as you can see here I have many custom modeled buildings because uh, Maxi's buildings um, might look boring after a while and they are smaller in size so they take up many commercial officers job but they are smaller in size so they might not look as good as buildings that people created themselves on Simtropolis okay so the initial years will be hard because the education levels are low so you must build a you must build a university to increase the education level of the sims so this university will help to boost the education level of the city very quickly and it is a priority in your city so you need to build elementary schools and also universities these two types of building itself will kickstart your education level and boost it very quickly up to more than 100 in 20 years or so okay so when education levels rise it is very logical that the sims are smarter and they are able to work in more um, sophisticated jobs so they are able to work in high-tech industries manufacturing industries and also commercial offices so this will boost the demand of the commercial offices and with more high-tech industries and manufacturing industries there will be more goods and services produced so more offices can be set up you know to facilitate the transfer and the sales of all these products so you know all these sectors all these industrial commercial and residential um, zones interact with each other so the more your city grows the more the commercial offices grow so commercial offices are the have the most um pretty structures out of the tree so that's why we build a commercial sector at the center um, to show off you know the splendor of the city in due time when many um, skyscrapers start growing at the center so as you can see here there's already um, some big skyscrapers growing so um, do pardon me you know if I'm talking a little bit fast uh, I'm trying my best to slow down but you know 
there's a lot of information to be disseminated and as you can see here this is double speed so that you know I'm able to shorten this um, to cater to um, short attention spans so we need to build our landmarks and we need to make sure that our coverage is strong so we need to build our fire and police stations to increase the safety and the land value of the region so whenever you can build landmarks feel free to do so building parks and landmarks will help to increase the land value of the region of your city so that you know nicer houses and offices start growing in a sense so you can analyze the graph to see how your city is growing so the city is growing pretty well and my income and expenses are balancing out pretty well so if you do have any issues trying to balance the income and expenses i have an old video on how to manage the budget so do do feel free to check it out as well so when you have enough um, income you need to build hospitals so hospital is the next rocket booster to boost the land value and the wealth of the sims so you need to make an educated workforce you also need to keep a population that is healthy so that you know they have longer lifespans and they are able to work in these um, high wealth sectors okay so when your school has a strike you need to make sure that you increase the demand of the I mean you increase the supply of the teachers and the capacity of the school so you need to build large elementary schools in due time so that you are able to um, get more sims to be educated so as you can see I've, I have restricted the growth of high wealth commercial for 27 years so right now I have just released the cap for um, high wealth commercial officers the highest one so um, some of the big commercial skyscrapers are starting to grow so initially my plan was to actually um, remove the cap of the CO dollar dollar and the CO triple dollar at once so the medium wealth and the high wealth commercial office at once but I realized that um, sometimes you might have this problem that um, the high wealth houses don't grow without the commercial offices so they are reliant on each other so we need to release the demand of the commercial offices first we need to reduce the demand I mean reduce the taxes of the commercial medium wealth commercial officers to seven first so that medium wealth officers can grow so when medium wealth officers start to grow the high wealth residents come in and then in turn they will spur the demand for high wealth even more high wealth commercial officers the CO triple dollar which I just um, released the tax so um, in due time we will see more high wealth commercial officers coming up so um, what you can do in the meantime is that when you build your residential zones we don't want to restrict all the commercial region to at the center of the city but we don't want to um, have too many skyscrapers at the sideline of the city so we can build this thin stretch of one times one thousand you know a very long stretch of commercial dense commercial region so that small buildings can emerge near the residential regions to supply some um, shopping for the sims but at the same time not um, steal away the demand for the offices if you get what i mean so these commercial sectors will provide jobs but at the same time um, not at the same time the main um, development will be at the center of the city where there's many skyscrapers so when i develop this city we will see that um, there will be strips of um, commercial shops around the uh, entire road which will also add to the beauty of the city so do feel free to shower your city with parks and recreational buildings these are very important because you need to increase the land value of the region I mean of the city itself for large um, high wealth houses to grow so when you do this um, you can finally you know get larger houses and houses that house many high wealth sims will also require more high wealth um, commercial office jobs so in the 
meantime the commercial sector will be en- enhanced as well so when you have enough money like me now you can develop the city even more and continue to cover um, crime and um, fire coverage and after you develop the sectors you will see that the city just explodes out and you need to manage the um, school and the hospital capacity well so that um, it doesn't exceed too quickly and you need to scroll it up so that the education and healthcare levels can be kept high so um, in this entire tutorial re- you realize that when I build residential and commercial zones I need to hold a control button to zone it so um, typical Maxis and um, Simtropolis buildings they have um, standard sizes so a standard size will be 4x4 4 4, um, 3x3 3 3x4 3, 3 um, and 3x2 and finally um, 5x4 and 5x5 so these sizes are the typical sizes that Maxis building grow so if you hold control and zone this huge um, rectangular or square plots of land there's more tendency that um, large buildings like this will grow instead of tiny houses that will annoy you and are land, if- and are land inefficient yep so the whole time when I was zoning commercial and residential zones I held the control button and zoned these zones so that you know big pieces of land were encourage big pieces of development to grow instead of small developments so you can see that there's a very big piece of 5x5 residential zone left there but it will grow in due time so in the meantime the commercial office sector is growing quite fast because there's a um, steady increasing demand for um, commercial high wealth office where you know more people are getting into office to work in there so um, I did build a mayor's house at the center of the city center just for fun so I like to be at the center of everything so you can feel free to play around and beautify your city with some trees and parks around the city center and also in the residential regions so we need to build um, this type of basic amenities like water treatment plants so that you know the water doesn't get too dirty so pollutants and um, air pollutants and water pollutants will decrease the land value of your city if it's not managed so as you can see here all these coal buildings will cause a lot of pollution for the city so this is a um, manufacturing hub right here as you can see so all this also will cause a lot of pollution so you need to build a water treatment plant so as you'll see later there's some buildings that actually can manage pol- manage the pollution pretty well so i will show you i will show you a few of them and you can consider building them or you can consider avoiding them so that you know you won't be cheating like me so if you want to go the fast way you can build this thing called the air purification plant this will easily suck out the air pollution of your city and air pollution is a very big deterrent to big buildings in the city so as you can see at the moment i built an air purification plant the development just skyrockets because the pollution level drop so when pollution level drops developers are very inclined to build new buildings since the residents want to live in a place where there is no air pollution so if you don't want to build an air purification plant you can consider enacting the clean air ordinance act so this act will help to ensure that manufacturing and dirty industries do not grow too much so that the pollution is kept in check or you can also increase the tax of the dirty and manufacturing industries to at least 11 or 12 percent so that they are in a minimum so this will also help to reduce the pollution but a major source of pollution is also from the roads itself so when a road is congested there's many cars there's pollution so it will cause a major pollution at the city center and also at the residential hub so the main problem here is to you know improve the transport infrastructure so right from the start you need to already develop the transport infrastructure so that 
there will be minimum traffic and there won't be too much pollution around the commercial region so if there's too much if there's too much commercial uh, sorry if there's too much pollution around a commercial region it will cause um, the land value to drop and then commercial developers will not develop in the area so your skyscrapers won't come out so that's a very important thing so we need to either cheat by building a air purification plant or you can just demolish all these industrial buildings and make sure that only high tech industries grow so um you need to have a strong demand of high tech industries before building the city so that um the city is able to sustain itself without having dirty industries so if you don't have an educated um, workforce it is impossible for you to sustain just on high tech industries because um, there's no educated sims to work in these industries so the, um, the city can only build dirty industries which is very polluting so you need to make sure that you already have cities that are educated so that the high tech industries the demand can spill over and also um, there's enough educated sims to encourage the growth of high tech industries so another drastic draconian measure is to demolish all the manufacturing and dirty industries so as you can see right now i'm doing right that so we demolish until only the high tech industries grow so we need to increase the tax of the dirty and the manufacturing industries even more so that all these things won't grow and the pollution level will drop yep so we only want high tech industries in our city in our main city but for the peripheral cities it can be a dumping ground for dirty and manufacturing industries so as you can see here we are keeping the best for this city the main city the biggest residential and commercial hub while we leave all the dirty industries the poorer house to the peripheral cities of course you still need a educated and um, relatively big um, high wealth sim population in order to grow this city so regional population is of paramount importance so even though the population of this city is only 100,000 but the population of the regional um, the, the region is already 400,000 so so um, the demand for all these industries and offices were already there and this will help to boost the demand even more so that your city will grow offices and industry not just for your city but also for the neighboring city which will result in a very large um, commercial district which is the large skyscrapers they are looking out for yep so as you can see here there's a lot of traffic woes because um, I have did some poor planning and you know I only use single roads for my residential regions so you can consider using avenues for your residential regions and then you build bus stops around it so um, you can build avenues to elevate the traffic you can also build bus stops so this is a very good bus stop so usually the bus stop is beside the road but this bus stop clips onto the road so you can try to find this bus stop the narrow blue red and black bus stops that can clip onto the road and they have higher capacity than the original maxis bus stops so they are very e efficient in transporting sims around so when bus stops work very well um the population i mean the pollution will decrease because more people take bus than cars and less air pollution means higher land value so the other thing is that there are less cars on the road so there's less commute time and hence people can get to their job more quickly and there's more efficient transportation so that you know the buildings can grow and you know more high wealth commercial offices and industrial hubs will grow so the highways will help a lot in transporting the seams quickly from one end of the city to the other so to re-emphasize my point we need to make sure that you know our city has a very systematic structure so the center of the city is the commercial district while the while the edges closest to the commercial district 
while the um do- the boxes uh in the tic tac toe system the boxes closest to the commercial district are the residential district and finally the four corners of the boxes are the industrial districts so as you can see here by building buses my commute time drop so it will encourage the development of more commercial offices and when commute time decreases more sims will be able to get to their job on time so the officers will have less tendency to be abandoned so we need to do our normal city maintenance to enact the ordinances that are good so you can check this out in my older videos on which ordinances to enact and also we need to make sure that we build everything that we can from the airports to the country clubs to the universities all these landmarks are absolutely important to encourage the growth of commercial offices and residential regions so this graph shows that you know more people take the bus and a lot less people take the um i, m- I mean a lot of people now change from um, using the car to using a bus which is a good thing for the city so that there's less congestion for the big city so one of the last things you need to build is an airport so unfortunately this city is too small so i can only build a small airport and then upgrade it many times to the largest size so that is the most regrettable so um we need to make sure we have enough space to build our airport initially so as you can see i made a mistake so oh my mouth is very dry okay so in conclusion we can see that um there's many things to take note when building a city so um this city has been run for a very long time so you need a lot of time for this city to grow and as you can see here, I have very nice um, commercial buildings growing left and right. So inside this commercial sector, we have a very strong backbone of transport infrastructure. And as you can see here, I've neatly slotted many parks around the city. Many, <coughs> sorry, many recreational facilities around the commercial region so that um, the land value is kept high and then there isn't so much monotony in the commercial sector. So the stock market is also very important for commercial growth. So this road itself has four huge skyscrapers. So that's an achievement might be. So there's a very funny building here as well. So the thing about landmarks is that um, the thing it does is that it releases the cap of the commercial and residential um, growth. So let's say you could only grow like 10,000 residential high wealth houses then I built a country club now the capacity is now lifted to 15,000 so if there was a demand for the residential zones the new houses will grow so as you can see here this is a night view of my city so it looks quite nice so I hope that this tutorial will help you to build a city like this so I'm talking about um, demand cap you know for a city to grow, you need to make sure that the demand capacity is very high so that you know your city will never be restricted to like 20,000 commercial high wealth jobs. So we need to build all these landmarks to increase it and we need to build all these parks as well to increase it. And we need to ensure that the demand is strong which is which comes from many factors like education levels, resident population, the amount of high-tech industries, the regional population, which I explained, and many, many other factors like commute time, pollution, your crime level, your fire protection, and your healthcare, etc, etc. So when your city is very successful, your mirror rating is very high, you can see all these huge buildings sprouting out. That means you have been very successful in growing your city. So when you see repeat buildings like this, you can demolish them and wait for a better building to grow. So hopefully your city doesn't repeat a whole bunch of um, same buildings. So it may take some time for nice new buildings to grow. So do be patient because the amount of development in your city 
the amount of commercial office growth is directly proportional to the education level. So education level is one of the most important things in your city. Okay, this is a plasma gasification plant. It is a add-on that allows you to um, deal with garbage without pollution. So it's like a waste to energy plant, but without the pollution. So moving back to the education thing, um, the development of high wealth commercial offices, I realize, is directly proportionate to the education level. So when your education level drops because of overcrowded schools or museums, the demand of commercial offices will drop as well. So it is a directly correlated thing. So you can actually check out the graphs of the commercial offices and the education level and you'll see how they are so related to each other. So when you are able to reach a very high education level of 160 for example, you will be able to grow a very very big um, commercial office population which in turn converts to very large office size sorry office skyscrapers yep so um, I'm trying to squeeze out every inch that I can so I'm building a very new residential hub here with many parks so this region will help me help me to grow even more residential houses near my commercial regions which in turn will boost the commercial demand for my um, city yep so um, if you have any questions regarding this city do feel free to ask me because um, this time round I have so little time but I'm trying my best to explain what I can rem remember about my tutorial so I hope that you appreciate this tutorial and um, hopefully I'm not speaking too fast right now because um, I do realize that my pronunciation is heavily compromised when I speak too fast so um, when your city grows very big do remember to build bus stops to facilitate facilitate the transportation okay so you can check the bus stop to see if they're efficient or not so i won't go into detail on how the transportation system works um, you can check that out also in my previous tutorials so i hope that you know you all have picked up something from this tutorial so i want to summarize it a bit um to start a city off you must have a city layout like this where the commercial sector is at the center but do make sure it's not too big so that um, the commercial supply the land area is very small so when the land area is very small um, the commercial offices have to cluster in a small area so this will cause the big skyscrapers to appear when the land is scarce okay so do not build too much commercial high wealth regions which will scatter the office population everywhere and this will result in smaller buildings coming out which do not look as spectacular as a large city center in many uh, major cities in the world okay so right now i'm just trying to um, build more bus stops and we need to make sure that um, our city um, is fully functional and everything is up and running so um, i realized that you know my city is too big and i want to build some um, more a more chill place like a place that where the living is not so hectic so i've built this um crossway point where um this small area where you know there are nice beaches and also um very quaint houses small ones that you know sims can chill here and live without the hassle of a big city so this is a nice place to escape from the big city and the big highway construction also looks very magnificent although it's an overkill in such a small river so all these houses are directly across the river from the city so to break the monotony of a big city i have developed a suburb on the other side of the city so um, you can check out my suburb tutorial as well um, in one of my older videos so just now i just look at a roundabout so you can also download the roundabout from the network add-on mod so this mod is very important it has a lot of transportation features that you can use the network add-on mod so all these 
um, interesting custom buildings can be downloaded from Simtropolis. S I M T R O P O L I S. So this is the best website to download all these custom buildings, which will facilitate you in developing your city. Of course, you can try to develop an organic city as well, but it would take a longer effort. And I hope that um, this tutorial has helped you quite a bit in understanding how a big city works. And so you can see that the highway is properly used when I check out how many cars are on the highway. So these highways help a lot in transporting the people in one side to the other. So a successful city will have a very big high-tech industrial hub without any dirty industries or manufacturing. So all these are very high value jobs and very big residential region as well where you know people commute to um, high tech industries to work or also to the commercial region to work. So this region is where all my miscellaneous buildings are, my recycling centers, airports and so on. So as you can see here, um, this is my city in a nutshell and I hope that you have enjoyed this tutorial and um, I'm just going to show you the last view of my network data. So as you can see here, the center of the city is the commercial region and the edges of the city are industrial regions. So the boxes that are closest to the commercial regions are the residential regions. So this is like a tic-tac-toe design where you know the commercial region and the residential regions are, are like in a regular fashion from each other. Yep and then you need to make sure that all these coverage data are um, full you need to make sure that um, the police and fire stations cover the region properly and also hospitals and schools and try to make sure that the air pollution is at a minimum so roads will have a lot of pollution when there's a lot of traffic so do make sure that um, you build um, public transportation to reduce the pollution and make sure that you have enough water and power and as you can see here the higher the education level the higher the growth of high wealth residential and commercial regions so i hope you enjoy this tutorial and you can understand me better so do feel free to ask me anything about my city and anything that you want to know um, thank you for watching this and i hope you enjoy your city building and of course see you soon